makers and welcome back to another vlog. If you are new here, a special welcome to you. I'm Joanna and this is Stitching the High Notes where I share what I'm currently making, whether it be knitting, sewing, crochet, cross stitch, embroidery, whatever my creative focus is as of late. My hope with every vlog is to encourage and inspire you to nourish your own creativity and to stitch joy or the high notes into your everyday life. How are you? I hope that you are well. I hope you've had a good couple of weeks since we visited last. If you missed it over on Instagram or the post here on YouTube on the community tab, I'm excited to be getting back into a rhythm with our chats every couple of weeks. It's going to be a bi-weekly vlog going forward and if you're watching this when it goes live, we're back to Sundays, which I've missed so much, Sunday upload days. It's something that became a tradition the last several years, and thank you for your patience as I've been kind of getting into a new rhythm as of late, and I'm excited to be in that rhythm going forward. And today, I have lots to share with you. In the last vlog, I shared that I would like to do a whip down and also em envelop stitch mania, which is something cross stitchers, cross stitchers and embroidery as well kind of do during the month of May, either to have new starts or to work on their whips, which is my case. So today I whittled it down to which whips and some new starts and new no new cast-ons yet, but more on that in a little bit. But I've whittled it down to a select few, or many, <laughs> which I have put into this amazing new basket, which I will share with you. So without further ado, if you haven't already, grab your knitting or stitching a lovely beverage, and let's catch up. I have my beverage here, which is an iced coffee. Uh, it's going to be hopefully not making me too energized as I share all of this, although I will be gaining a lot of energy here as I go through all of these whips and things because yarn fumes, cross stitch excitement is inevitable. But I have an iced coffee. I have been liking as of late um, some instant-ish, or you, you brew it overnight in their like in tea bags, and it's by Emma Chamberlain. I don't know if you know her. She's a really well-known YouTuber, um, very young, <laughs> but she has an amazing coffee company. For the most part, I only like the iced coffee and it's kind of ingenious. You can do like single serve or I did like a big batch in a big mason jar. But I've got a little bit of cashew milk in here and I've been sipping on it all throughout the morning because it is so hot already here today and this weekend. We are now in summer mode in Sacramento where I live in California. So iced coffee is a must. And yes, oh, and I'll leave a link down to that as well as everything that I am going to show and mention today down in the description box for this video. I like to call it the show notes. So yes, and if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. So let's get into it. I'm just going to grab, grab from the basket here and go here. The first thing is smushed in this project bag. This is one of mine that I made a couple of years ago in a collaboration with Legacy Fiber Arts, which are an amazing mother-daughter duo indie dyers. Um, we did like a bag uh, yarn collection pairing. Um, so anyway, the project in here is smushed in here and this is the main event for May. So these are things that I've kind of have in different categories of I definitely want to do it this month and then I want to work on it this month but I'm gonna probably carry it through summertime and then there's some like maybe I'll get to which I don't know if I really included in the basket and we'll see if I remember to bring it up but there's plenty to go over today so in here it's the keen wonder tank top which I'm showing here you hear a proper photo of the pattern when it is complete um, this is really the project that was the, besides cross-stitching and every spring slash 
summer I have the urge to start cross stitching again but this project in particular because it's a tank top I wanted to fix it it's a it's a whip that needs to be fixed which is why it's been in time out for a while and it is the front piece is done which I will show you here and I'll tell you about the yarn it's a little bit wrinkled is this the fort front? I think this is the front with the rich it, with the really cool ridges there. It's this beautiful blue, which I just adore. And I hadn't really worn a lot of blue like this before, but in the midst of making this project over the last couple of years, <laughs> I have incorporated more and more of this really lovely indigo blue into my wardrobe. And this was the beginning of it. So the, begin the front piece is done, and then the back piece is where things went awry a little bit, and then I put them on hold, and then I started to do the moving process to move up north, and you know, life, life can be lifey. But the time is here to fix it. So here's the back piece. It's a race her back piece. And what happened is that the one side of the neck was longer than this side and it hasn't really unraveled here yet so it's not shorter because of that so I'm going to be fixing it and actually it's going to be happening next week the reason I have it is because I've been cross stitching which I'll be showing you I started one of the new ornaments um, and working on my granny stripe blanket which I'll also be showing you but also I've been finishing up a uh, spring bag orders which are going out on Monday so I've been at the sewing machine a lot the last week so but I figured out how to fix it which is really great the last couple of weeks since we visited and I thought oh man I'm gonna have to figure out where I was in the pattern and all of this stuff and then I realized Thank goodness for garter lines, garter knit <laughs> lines in a pattern because I can just look up where this is in the pattern and just rip it out to that point and then pick up where the pattern leaves off. So I've already looked at the pattern and I know how to what to do and I'm very excited to get cracking on it because it's like kind of figuring out your your next steps can be the roadblock and then once you kind of get past that hurdle it's like I'm ready to go I'm ready to follow the pattern and go so what I'm gonna do and I'll show it the process when I do it I'm gonna put in a needle um, probably a circular needle is what I was stitching this on um, and pick up the stitches like one leg of the knit stitches uh, here and then so then I have it on a cable and then I'll tink back to this point. Um, but once I have kind of it in, held in place, then I'll just rip it out. It'll be wonderfully cathartic. <laughs> so that is this, oh yes, and the yarn. I'm sure some of y'all, what about the yarn? So this is the yarn that I used, which I picked up at a, formerly local but always in my heart local yarn shop the royal bee yarn company down in pacifica california and this is a kobasi dk it's made by haiku uh hiku i think it's haiku uh it's 55 percent cotton 16 percent bamboo 21 percent elastic nylon and eight percent silk so it's perfect for the summertime there's not a lot of give. I'm always worried about the size, although I held it up. Thanks to my horrible flu last month, this I think will definitely fit, fit me because I lost weight, <laughs> but not the best diet, the flu, but but I think, I think it'll be good. It, it, so because of the makeup of the yarn, it's not gonna block or give really that much, um, like a wool would, wool would tend to grow. Um, so yeah, so we'll see. I'm really excited just to 
just to do it, just to enjoy the process of making it, seam up the sides. There was a really great idea that one of my Patreon members um, had when I was going through my whips to decide what to make. We did like a live stream chat a couple of weeks ago, a week and a half ago. And they said they had a great idea that if it doesn't fit, then I can like, I'll probably like uh, put some stitch holders together before I seam it to see how it's fitting. Um, but it, so if I need a little bit more give, then I could do like some garter um, fabric on the sides just to add to it a little bit. So that was a really good idea and kind of motivated that me that much more to think, oh, I might have like some fixes here to make sure it fits. So yay, exciting, exciting. So that is gonna be next week, the main event super hyped. Next up is in a similar fabric, <laughs> just so happens to be in the sweater bag, is the granny stripe blanket that I mentioned, which is a crochet blanket. And I actually started crocheting on this again the other night as I was watching TV. It was really great. Um, and I hadn't done it in a while. Now it's going to be super hot. So this is going to be probably a morning only type of thing for a while, but it's just so meditative and just a wonderful, scrappy, lovely blanket. Oh, that's so pretty. So what I am doing for this, I'm not following a written pattern. I'm following an amazing tutorial, which I will leave down below that is here on YouTube. And I'm also uh, doing magic knot ball method to put together my little mini skeins and scraps that I want to put in it. And a while ago, I decided to just go hog wild and make a giant magic knot ball ball. <laughs> so it is just a mix of various mini skeins, things that are from advent calendars or things that I've gotten in swaps over the years, leftovers from sock you know, projects, things like that. All fingering weight is this particular blanket. And I love it so much. I need to put a progress keeper, I realize, on here as I work on it so I can show you kind of the amount that I've made. For this time, I think I did it like I think I didn't do that much, but I did a lot because I was getting into the swing of it again. I think I started it like down here, so I did this kind of whole row. Now I have the size for this. I have a link down to, I believe my Ravelry page. Future me, remember that. <laughs> and I think I included the amount that I chained uh, on, the amount of stitches. It was just over 300. I did the amount, um, I did like a sample amount just to chain it on and then put it on my queen size bed because I want this to be a topper for the queen size bed. Um, so it's quite big and long. I'll probably do a layout at some point in the future. I've done it several times over the past. Um, but yeah, it's really exciting to be working on this again. I also, oh, and I'll tell you what hook I'm using, which I think is also on my Ravelry page, but I'm using a size D hook, which is a 3.25, yeah, 3.25 millimeter hook. And these are really great ergonomic. It's from a set, uh, Clover that I think I got on Amazon, but I think I've also seen them at like big box stores here in the States, um, in like Joanne Fabrics or Michaels or whatever, definitely Joanne Fabrics, so. So yes, so that is whip number two that is just being, you know, it's an ongoing forever, but it's something I just felt called to work on, especially during May, which is really lovely. Um, and then, what was I gonna say? Oh yeah, I went through all of my whips because I did a big whip parade at the beginning of the year. I'll have a link down to that vlog down below if you'd like to see. And I have a Northeasterly blanket, which is another scrappy, scrappy blanket that I cast on several years ago. And I might work on that maybe, probably not this month, um, 
because I have quite a few other things I want to focus on. But it was really lovely to take it out and take a look at it because I really would like to work on it. But, but that blanket in particular, because it's a denser, not denser, but it's a thicker fabric somehow in my mind, um, is something I really want to do in the fall. So yeah, I think I'll probably put it out of my kind of boxes here where a lot of my stash and whoop, and some of my other um, whips live. Um, I'll probably put it into this basket after May. By the way, before I forget, let me share with you this amazing basket that I picked up. So this is actually a picnic basket, technically. It's got a little strap there for your shoulder or crossbody. And I've seen comparable, you probably all have seen comparable baskets like this um, that are fair trade and made by various cultures, Africa, different places that are sold in yarn shops. But I really liked this one because it's narrow and it fits perfectly next to my ottoman and then next to my calyx bookshelves right here. Uh, and it's also quite tall and deep. <laughs> so it's perfect for like the sweater size fits like perfectly like this way down in it. Um, I have some really old old school uh, needlework bags that I used to make that are now retired and they fit like they stack perfectly in there. And then also I just really love that I can grab it literally with a strap and go like any other basket but I like that it they're a little bit more enclosed in there um, but I can grab and go and go outside and make or take it to my family's house if we're having a pool day but I want to like sit you know on the chairs a good time and knit and stuff so I don't have to like I can take like a select few but if I want to take like three project bags with me I can take it in this basket so it's really exciting and to have it in sight again. That was kind of my thing and my intention is to have my whips in my sight so that I'm more, um, I'm more, you know, inspired to grab them and go, ooh, I wanna work on this project. So very exciting. Now for a little bit of cross stitch. Last vlog I shared that I was just about done except for the final finishing one of my Satsuma Street Easter Spring Majig ornaments. I am currently working on the bunnies. They're a pair of bunnies and I finished the first one minus doing the cardstock back gluing it and then also gluing on the little bunny tail and I decided before I do that that I wanted to work to start and work on the next one which I have done and I've gotten quite far. I haven't worked on this in a couple of days but it's been perfect to take on the train. These are just a perfect size. So this is the second guy. The first one was kind of pink and this one's more of a turquoise purple kind of theme. Uh, I've probably shown you the proper photo of it, but here it is in the plastic. Sorry from the glare. Look at those little tails. They're so cute. And I got some sparkly cardstock that ins I was inspired by the finishing that was shared by the designer on her Instagram. And yeah, I just love it so much. It's so, so I've finished the body and the outline of the ears and now it's going to be fun. I just have to like fill it in with the various colorways of floss. And then there are some sequins and beads that go on it as well. These are made on perforated paper and they come in these great kits are like my favorite cross stitch project as of late. Um, I just, I'm going to have trees and decor with all of these little cross stitch things. <laughs> it's going to be so much fun. So that has been a whip the last couple of weeks that I have been actively working on. I've made great progress. I think I just really have gotten into the swing with cross stitch again and especially with the like perforated paper stuff. So it's a lot of fun. The other thing is embroidery. So I have it in this, which is my prototype for the needlework pouch that I have in my shop that um, so this is way smaller than what I ended up using, but it's perfect for this particular project. And this is one I'm excited to work on this month. This is my bookshelf embroidery, and this is a kit by Auburn Hoops. 
uh, and I'm filling in books as I go that I've read this year or just it'll probably be multiple years let's be real <laughs> hello <laughs> to fill this out but I, I officially started it at the beginning of this year and what I'm gonna do in May is hopefully I'll have another book to add but I'm going to do the bookshelves. I'm going to do it in the brown and I'm going to do the little leg and the little like just all of the kind of structural stuff for the project. So this is very exciting to bring out. Very cool. Uh, another cross stitch one to finish. So I'm going to have a finishing party here. Probably I think next week is going to be the week of finishing because um, I'm going to do the tank top. I'm going to do these bunny ornaments and I remembered I need to finish this cute little frog. <laughs> so this is a, a Halloween version of a similar Satsuma Street um, cross stitch kit. It's called Hoppy Halloween. I have every Halloween kit <laughs> that she's come out with because I'm going to have I'm going to be putting out, and sorry if this is so redundant for you all, but I'm so excited that this is the year that I get to do this, is I have a new Christmas tree um, that I am going to be putting out actually probably just after mid-September, just after my birthday, and I'm going to decorate it with autumn stuff, and then the minute maybe even before, but the minute October 1st hits, uh, it's going to be Satsuma Street Halloween ornaments and other handmade ornament things for Halloween. And then after Halloween, it'll go back to autumn. And like I, you'll see here, I have something that I'm going to be working on for the autumn for that tree. <clears throat> and then it'll switch over to the holidays, from Christmas, winter. So this little guy, I think is the first one of the new sets that I had made. I already have made four or five of the Halloween ornaments. And you probably are like, why are there holes in this frog? <laughs> that is where beads and sequins need to go. So I need to do the beads and sequins and then cut it out and finish it. And for these, I have sticky back felt um, that will go on these and then I like to tack it in at least a couple of places around it Put a little string on it and then it's done. So that'll be part of the finishing party next week Probably next throughout the week and then next weekend and Then let's let's grab another little goodie. See I'm starting to get excited <laughs> Here's a start and another knitting project whip that I want to work on so I also would like to start this as my next Halloween. So this will be probably the next week. I'm also just going to go with the flow. If I'm like, forget that, I want to start this Pumpkin King <laughs> kit. I'm going to do it. Um, and if you don't know, like obviously the link will be down below to all of these kits, but they're so great because they come with all of the floss that you need. They come with a needle, full instructions of what to do. And then the perforated paper and the pattern are inside the little cardstock there. So I'm gonna do the Pumpkin King Nutcracker. And then I think I have a Christmas. I still have to look for it, but honestly it might be I've got my plate full for May, so I think I'm going to probably do it in the summer, but there are some proper Christmas nutcrackers, holiday cr nutcrackers that I have too that I want to start as well, so I have a Christmas themed thing to do. And then in here, I've got a shawl that I started during Vlogmas, which is the Anasadora shawl and I'm using the advent calendar that I received from Plies and Hellhounds, Gabby, who's an indie dyer. Um, and I am so excited to start this shawl again. I just put it to the side to focus on other things. Let me grab it here and to show you. Uh, it is obviously designed with uh, advent calendar mini skeins in mind. Uh, what you do is you alternate colors every couple of rows. 
with this really cool like eyelet garter stitch pattern. It It's very comparable, a little bit different than the Habitation Throw, which I've made a couple of those blankets by Curious Handmade. Um, but you have this really fun fringe that you, so you don't have to weave in any ends. <laughs> and you keep this really cool fringe. It's very like Stevie Nicks, uh, like, you know, I love it. It's going to be a great like autumnal shawl to wear. So I am obviously the fringe will be evened out on the bottoms there um, and finished once I finish the shawl. Uh, and yeah, I'm really excited to work on this again. I'm like, it, I'm looking at it. And I'm kind of itching to work on it a little bit today, but I have lots of sewing to finish up for you all today. So, um, but yeah, and I think it's going to be It'll obviously be easier and less finicky. That was part of why I kind of put it down for a while uh, because it's not long enough. You may, you increase as you go along. So the rows get longer, the number of stitches on your needles get increase more and more. And so you're switching colors quite often um, at, in the beginning uh, because obviously you don't have as many stitches on the needles. But once you start to get more stitches, obviously it'll be more in a flow uh, and then you'll get to a point where you decrease the stitches as well I've, pro I've shown you a proper picture but there's a little pattern there and I had right at the end just to make sure I was all queued up I organized everything and put I think except for these guys I think they're just still in the envelopes from so I gotta make sure they stay in the envelopes. But for the most part, except for those last couple of guys, I've either wound them up as I'm working on them or I made sure to put what day was what so that I can make sure that I'm keeping to the days um, within the pattern and you kind of start to see the same sequence of colorways. Oh, I loved Gabby's Advent was just beautiful last year and all of the colors and I just I can't wait to make this it was holiday themed it was mythological um, was the theme um, mythology rather um, but it's very autumnal and, and I think it's gonna be perfect for that like late autumn into winter vibe the needles before I forget are size six I believe I'm taking a look at my pattern to make sure it's been a while yes us size six four millimeter and i'm using circulars and i'm using my signature needles which are really fancy needles and some of my favorites my go-to are chowgu needles but these are great i bought a fixed pair oh no they're i have a couple of different size um cords for them but i bought this set uh, I think at Stitches West maybe like four years ago um, when they were vending there and I love them I got this size in particular because a lot of shawls like this one are made using that size needle uh, and it's just nice to have kind of a go-to shawl needle set okay so there's a lap whip my ottoman is getting very full. Let's see what else we got in here. So a start that I think I would like to start at the end of May. This is where the stitch mania of uh, mania of uh, cross stitching <laughs> begins. And I have a kit by the Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery. This is their Maple Lane Sal, which is no longer a Sal, a stitch along mystery. Uh, and it's Maple Lane like trolleys. Uh, I'll put a picture here so you can see the finished project. And it's just, it's so darn cute. And I really, really want to make it. It's just really, really inspiring. And when I was showing the photo with my Patreon peeps when we were deciding what whoops I want to do. Um, I realized like this photo as well as uh, several other things were what 
uh, gave me the idea for this year's holiday box theme, which I'll have some details about the next round of pre-orders here at the very end if you're interested, uh, which is holiday market. So I just love the vibe of craft fairs and craft markets and um, just celebrating independent artists and the community vibe that you get. I have a very close to me in my close to my neighborhood. I have a lot of comparable fairs all the time too, which also sparked that idea. But this piece also did. So I'd like to really kind of kit it up and get it going here. I need to buy a couple of floss cards that I can use for various projects. I have some that have come in um, kits like this. It, it didn't come with this particular one, um, but I would like like some wooden ones or something. I'm gonna take a look at my go-to site for patterns and accessories and stuff because I'm more of a modern cross stitch and embroidery um, aesthetic and that site is called stitched modern if you've not heard of it please go to it it is amazing i love everything on that site it's curated so beautifully so i want to get a floss card so i can put everything together and then the i'll share with you i don't think i've opened this oh, we're gonna open it together the linen that i chose because you had a cut you could do like ada 14 count which is like pretty standard kind of go-to very like grid like and but what I like to do and I'm going to be getting back into here is working on a higher count linen um, which takes a little bit more of a different uh, technique uh, to cross stitching um, and oh isn't this beautiful beautiful piece I'm gonna have to iron it um, and get it kind of set up here so this is vellum 13 by 18 piece of fabric cashel 28 count um, and it's from picture this plus hand dyed cross stitch fabric beautiful and I love that it's finished and surged on the end uh, or just like you have the selvage edge up here it looks like I got lucky and have a selvage edge and I am going to be stitching in hand for this. I like when I'm not doing perforated paper or doing something in a hoop for a cross stitch, I love stitching in hand because you can actually, once I get into it, I feel like I'm gonna have to relearn how to do it because it's been a while. Um, uh, you go so much faster. You can just zip along. It's just, oh, it's great. And it's easier on, for me, it's easier on my, neck and shoulders and hands like you can just get into a really lovely flow with it so i'm gonna be starting this but honestly i'm gonna get those cardstock or cardstock floss cards and i'm gonna practice stitching in hand with another whip which i will grab out of here okay we've got three more here to go through oh my goodness this <laughs> this basket was full so this is the crafters manifesto another satsuma street she can you guess who my favorite designer is uh and here is a picture i might have shown you a proper picture as well but here is a picture of it this is a priority for this month to work on this and to get into the flow with it because I really want to hang this up in either above my desk or over in my sewing nook area. And this is, I have not worked on this in a couple of years, um, but this is it. It's on black. <laughs> I have a lovely huge window now, so, and I had really good light before. But here it is. I even still have my TARDIS needle minder here. I have a wide collection of needle minders by A Needle Runs Through It. So I'll link this down below. I, was a, I still am, but I was a huge Doctor Who fan there for a while. So a lot of TARDIS themed uh, accessories and notions. But I didn't get 
too far on it and I'm pretty sure that I messed up the placement of something so it's going to be one of these whips maybe I'll try to do it next week we'll see um, but it's at least the mystery of why I stopped just to make sure where I am make sure everything's on track is the priority for May and then to work on a little bit and uh, get into the flow of it as I mentioned before um, so I can really get cracking on this because I really would love to hang it up. Now this was a scrap piece of fabric if I remember correctly which is why I have it all wonder clipped here. It's very annoying so I'm actually going to, I surged the sides I believe, um, but I think I'm going to measure it out and make sure that I have enough space and then cut it off and surge the other side so that I'm not dealing with the weight of it. And as you can see, it's not in a hoop because I have been stitching in hand this particular piece. Although it looks kind of like maybe I had it in a Q snap, which is um, a lot of times what I like a, a go-to way for me to do it. But, um, but I don't know, I'm gonna have to take a look at it. But so much fun i can't wait to work on this as well let me get it back up so i don't have patterns all over the place here now here is one that i think i'm gonna work on it like the very end of the month but really going into the summer it's in that kind of category of like i'm gonna put it in my whip basket but it's not gonna be like the go-to thing that i do but i am determined i think i've showed this since the beginning of stitching the high notes seven years ago <laughs> but this is by lizzie kate who i don't even know if they're still around um i got this little tiny itty bitty kit i think and it wasn't even a full kit it didn't come with like floss or anything so i gotta stretch out my legs here um i think i got this when i was in grad school so 17 years ago or something crazy like that so it's this cute little autumnal little itty bitty thing it's not going to be that big i think i found some scrap fabric for this and that's about as much as i've done i think it's a start that i did during may of 2020 um if i remember correctly um and then it just keeps getting forgotten about i even have the needle in there i've got all of the like floss in my little bag and by the way this bag is like the OG original stitching the high notes needlework bag lovely design horror to make in production <laughs> which is why I stopped making them but um I still love it it's really lovely to have stitched modern by the way I love my needlework pouch but um, if you're looking for something more simple, Stitch Modern has a great collection of just like go-to great sturdy bags as well. But anyway, so this is something I think this summer definitely I have like some fall projects that I want to work on. Something that is not in this bag and I must have been wavering back and forth about doing it in May. And I think the reality check looking at this large collection on my ottoman here that will be going back into the whip basket is that it, it, it's going to happen starting in June, which are my fall charm set, um, the kit and the little knitted acorns and pine cones and stuff by Susan B. Anderson. Uh, and you make like a little garland out of it. I mean, you can do whatever you want with them, but I really want to make a little garland out of them, a couple of them, and put them on my autumn tree. So that's something that I'm going to be picking up in June. Let's just call it now. <laughs> so that's why I haven't shown that. I talked about it earlier, but it didn't make the cut for May. <laughs> And the final whip to share with you that I would like to work on this month, starting to work on again this month and then continue on during the summer, is another oldie but a goodie, the Cricut Collection Playing with Jacks. Now, I have not worked on this in a couple of years, but it is, for the most part, all kitted up. I believe I have all of the floss that I need in its own separate floss container, <laughs> embroidery floss container. So I've got all the colorways I need, and here is what I had done so far. I'm uh, stitching in hand for this one as well. Oh, it's so pretty. Love it. It's gonna be quite a large piece, 
and it's something that I definitely want to hang up in my um, sorry it, I was caught off guard because of the size of the piece I'm this must be a scrap piece of fabric <laughs> but I think I am gonna hang it up in my stitching area or my sewing nook uh, my studio if you will and yeah it's gonna be really really great now I'm gonna modify this photo and I have the modification um, where I'm not going to do the jack-o'-lantern because I want it to be more evergreen autumn so I can um, you know have it throughout the year this the jack-o'-lantern I love but it just makes it very hollow like specifically October Halloween so that'll be really lovely and it'll have um, not just a white pumpkin it has like some designs on it so it kind of has this kind of quilt folk kind of uh, design on it as well so yeah, those are my whips that I am focusing on in this month, and I have been, and uh, I'm excited next week to get cracking on. I'm going to have a lot to share with you in a couple of weeks on that, but before I close today's vlog, I have a couple more things that I wanted to share with you. A little bit of shop news that I've peppered out already kind of organically naturally throughout our chat today but wanted to mention a few things again uh, that your spring bag pre-orders are going out and shipping in a couple of days and May 15th so stay tuned to your emails for those shipping notifications I'm so excited to be sending those out to you all they've come together so beautifully and I'm excited my mom has been helping out quite a bit uh, and we've gotten into a really great rhythm with it. She came over actually yesterday and helped out with it. Um, and she's got her assigned tasks that she's getting her skills like honed more and more on. And it's just lovely to like make with her again. It had been a while, so very exciting. Uh, as I also mentioned earlier, the holiday bag pre-orders for the 2023, can you believe 20, I don't know why that just made me go, oh my gosh, it's 2023. But the 2023 holiday box, rather, pre-orders are opening up again for the last time uh, on May 20th at 9 a.m. Now, these are special boxes that have a collection of goodies inside. There'll be a skein of yarn by... Um, uh, Speckled Finch Studios, Nina, beautiful yarn. She's an indie dyer out of San Francisco who I've collaborated with before. And the theme is holiday markets, as I mentioned before. Uh, all of the details can be found on the website. There'll also be a notions bag included. You have your choice between a drawstring bag or a sweater sized bag. Uh, and there is a progress keeper that keeps with the theme and then a a treasure that is a keepsake that will be included. So they're a simplified version of the box this year, but so, so special. I really wanted to have it be simpler, but higher quality for you all this year. So I'm really excited to start making those soon. And then the last update is uh, just to let you know that the summer bag pre-orders for the two collections, ice cream, ice, uh, ice cream party, I would say ice cream, you scream, we all scream for ice cream, but uh, the ice cream party bag collection and the desert love collection, thank you all so much for your pre-orders. Those uh, materials have been ordered and production will begin very soon on those. And those are on target to head out to you all June 12th. I will have many more things for you in the shop, uh, some more news for that, probably starting the following or, or in the next vlog. Um, some new things coming to the shop, which is really exciting. I haven't had new things in a while. Uh, and yeah, that's the shop news. Let me grab another sip of this coffee, which I think I've had too much. I'm gonna probably just toss the rest of this <laughs> and I'll wrap up our chat for this vlog. Oh my goodness, my ottoman overfloweth. I'm going to show you a picture of it here so you can see what I'm looking at. <laughs> I'm so excited to, I feel so reinvigorated having this kind of 
way of organizing and reassessing and picking and choosing which was my intention for this year to kind of have like this candy store of makes to pick and choose from I feel so lucky and feeling so grateful that I have these projects and all of these materials at my fingertips to nourish my creativity and allow my creativity to nourish me for it to go the other way as well so I would love to know if you are taking part in a whip down this month or throughout the summer let us know what you are making down below or if you are ca in cast on mode and are casting on all of the things I of course also have that as well with a lot of these cross stitch starts I definitely am gonna be casting something new on once I finish that tank top that is my carrot <laughs> that I'm working towards before I cast something on because I have a couple of sweater quantity uh, beautiful sweater patterns all queued up and ready to go as well and yeah I hope that you enjoyed this vlog it's been lovely to catch up with you all and I hope you are well and happy Mother's Day if you are seeing this on uh, Sunday and all my love to you if Mother's Day is a hard day for you it is for me for Father's Day so I completely send my love to you and yeah i will talk to you all again very soon in the meantime i will see you on instagram on the newsletter and probably a little bit here on youtube on the community posts bye